Hey, Go fans, I got something special for you today because we're going to look at a game of Cho Chikun, and not just any game, this is the game that the t Suji was played. I know the internet loves its memes, and one of our favorite Go memes is the Cho Chikun t Suji, t Suji, T-E-A, Suji, and that is, of course, a play on, you know, drinking tea, as well as the word t Suji, or tactic. In this game, uh, well, here, I won't spoil it yet. I got the clip loaded. When we get to that part of the game where Cho Chikun employs the mighty t Suji, you will see it if you've not seen it before. I think, again, many people who watch this channel have seen it before. I've actually featured this clip on one of my earlier YouTube videos. But if you haven't seen it, you know, stay tuned. It's something pretty special. Cho Chikun, I was also thinking about this week, just because so many people, when we're thinking about AI Go and this new advent of what really strong Go games look like, AIs really like territory, and they find these insane invasions, right? They take all this territory, and whatever their opponent's left with, they find these insane invasions. And that is so Cho Chikun. Like, that is his style. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, Cho Chikun uh, is one of the most winningest, I think he is the most, still the winningest pros in Japanese history. He has a career that spanned, I don't know, close to 50 years at this point, I think. And... Uh, he's got this wild, crazy hair. He's got these trademark glasses. He was actually born in Korea, uh, but like many Chinese and Korean players of his generation, he got shipped over to Japan to actually study Go because Japan was the center of the Go universe for much of the 20th century. Perhaps the other most famous 20th century Go player to be imported into Japan was Go Sagan. Uh, he's still playing today. He's still around. Uh, but this game was a tournament game from, I think, the NHK NHK Cup. Uh, it was a third round game in this cup against another nine don professional, uh, Tako Shinji. Uh, Cho Chikun is black, and yeah, I'm just we'll 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 do some game review and talk a little bit about the differences between how pros think five years ago versus now with the advent of AI. I also like to I I like Cho Chikun games. To I like let me put it this way I like teaching Cho Chikun games to my students, especially in contrast to. Uh, um, like uh, Masaki. <laughs> Ta uh, oh man, why can't I say his name? Take min Tak Take no ko no. Why Takamiya? Oh my God, that was the biggest brain fart. Takamiya Masake games. Who's one of my favorite Go players? Again, both Cho Chikun and Takamiya styles have changed over the years. Again, traditionally, though, Takamiya was this bald-headed dreamer who dreamed of, like, bigger and bigger territories and the center being the biggest center of the universe, the Go board, and just wanting to take all the territory and, and fight there. Cho Chikun was this little Weasley fellow who would get in everywhere and make a mess. And so you had these two different Go styles in Japanese Go, very diametrically opposed, and their games are always so fun to watch. In this game, however, we're not going to see Cho, mm, at, least, at least up through the Tsuji part, not play his usual... Uh, tendencies. Maybe that's the reason for why he needs the TCG to win. Anyway, let's take a look at the game. Cho Chikun is black, and I need to click in the screen somewhere to make the moves go. There we go. Shinji is white, and I do have the win rate graph up here. The robot kind of freaks out a little bit at the end. Like, like I mean, like I think the robot actually gets confused, and I think that's that's potentially a difference in Komi because I think the robot's calculating 7.5 Komi. This was. 6.5 Komi, but even then, I'm, I'm, I, it still doesn't quite explain how confused the robot gets. Um, so these great swings in win percentage aren't just... Um, yeah, it's, it, I can't really explain them, actually. Like, it's it's very weird. All right, so I mean, black approaches this is very normal. We have two dual 4-4 openings. Uh, again, still, this is still very robot, right? Still super robot. Although robots would have probably <laughs> invaded 3-3 by now you know, by move six, but, you know, whatever. Uh, Cho Chikun plays very fast, invades another one. Or not invades, approaches. And then he plays a non-robot move. And again, this is for really the second half of the 20th century in particular. This this is one of the de facto moves, right? And longer than that, obviously. This is this was a game from 2015. Uh, we have a five-space extension, a three-space extension. Both, both of these extensions were considered good spacing for... Uh, go large go extensions five space being this ide idealized golden standard of large extensions 
the robots don't really see it that way, right? So you don't see this this type of formation actually occurring that much at the, the highest level of Go games, which is pretty fascinating. By the time, it was seen very, very proper. Uh, white approaches here, again, very common response. If black is trying to develop something large in this corner, very large framework, you reduce it. And so it's easiest to reduce from this side. Again, totally expected. White is playing very patient. Uh, in fact, this is almost more Cho Chacoon style, right? This is more, you know, let's be patient, take our territory, and then find our invasion points later. It's very Hante, very proper style. Go. Black pincers, again, this is a move actually looking to take the outside. White takes the corner, giving black the outside. And so we're going to have this classic, uh, this is the more complicated version of this Joseki, uh, but the the, net, the end result what we're looking for is still going to be that white is going to take the territory and black is going to get the outside. And black is happy with the outside because bla all of black stones are on the outside right now. So all of black stones will be working together. Um, however, if we check in with the robot, the robot currently says that white's winning a little bit. Oh no, sorry, black. It actually likes black, which is cool. Okay. Uh, this is a Joseki. It looks scary. It is not. It's pretty standard. Now, actually, there, this this move's interesting because I was taught that, and I, and I actually played this. I actually played this move against a three down professional, Janice Kim, in just a fun game uh, we had one night. The and I got destroyed. Right, <laughs> like like. It was a pretty, it was a pretty uh, memorable game for that reason, because I got in this position, I was like, hmm, I wonder why people don't pull the stone out and, and fight. And from that point forward, I, was, I learned slash was taught that, oh, this fight is actually really bad for black. Uh, it's really hard to defend these, this group of black forest stones on the white corner so solid, and um, white can pressure the right-hand side. So here, if I play a, a sequence out like this, you can kind of see that, you know, it's a fight, it seems manageable, um, but again, I was taught that this was bad, right, for black, right? Black, white actually gets, even though white has a weak group in the center, white actually gets some initiative in the center because the corner is already settled. However, uh, when reviewing this situation with a robot, the robot says the fight's actually fine, like a hair worse than normal Joseki. So that you can actually totally play this fight in your games uh, if you <laughs> know how to fight well, being the corollary. Uh, again, this is a 2015 game between two Nine Don professionals. Cho Chikun is going to play the Hante, and not looking to fight. Just We're just going to take the outside. We're getting what we want. All of our stones are working together. White can't really do anything other than take the stone here. Uh, black gets this free Atari. White takes. And now, at this point, Black can either fix this shape or take Sente to play a big move, And in which case Black takes the other five space extension from the bottom right-hand corner. So look at this massive framework. This is so not a Cho Chikun, like typical position that you study when you look at Cho Chikun games, right? Again, Cho Chikun wants territory, wants to invade everywhere. This is looking like a Takamiya Masaki game, where mm, all this is just on the outside. Uh, Robot says it's actually slightly better for white, and I think there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, the robots do not like the five space extensions nearly as much as humans do. And the robots also looking at these little defects going, yeah, this is, this is not easily defendable uh, in the solid cache. It's just worth more. So again, we're in the robot era. Robots play like classic Cho Chikun, take territory, invade later, make a mess. Uh, in fact, the robot makes a mess right away, starts with this cut, starts with this fight. This is the proper move here. Uh, this starts to take the territory as well as defend this, but it's going to leave this side very weak. And at this point, uh, I think the preferred robot move is actually a move like here. Uh, it just it just continues to grow the top and actually fixes the shape problems that are up here. And granted, yeah, these two stones are probably going to die. Actually, the Aji is kind of difficult for white to, to deal with. Black will get another free extension over here. And white doesn't really gain a lot for killing these two stones. Yes, white gets access to the outside, but that's about it. It's not a lot of points. So if black can make more points here and solidify, and black can make more points here, then it's kind of worth letting white actually get this group out to the outside, because it's not really going to do much else. I think that's the robot reasoning, if the robots could think. Uh, we can actually turn the robot on. Yep, and indeed, the robot says, play here. And... Yeah, even the robot's like, don't don't try to take these stones too quickly. You know, do something in this corner first. Don't let black grow from this side too, uh, which is cool. And now black can run these stones out, right? So that's more of a, 
this is a very robot kind of sequence, right? Robot level thinking, where I think a human sequence, the first of all, the most human sequence of all is, oh, these two stones are in trouble. Let's help them with a move like this. Uh, it also, this move is also pretty cool because it looks like white can cut through here, but not really. Um, because black has this Atari. Like if white does this cut, uh, oh, actually white can to totally cut through here. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, sorry, we can do this way. And after this, you know, whoops. Black can't connect there. But, no, sorry. Uh, but, black, there we go. I want to kill that stone. Uh, we can do this sort of trade. Where black actually, even though white gets out, this is a really strong shape for black on the right. And so, black is super happy. White gained basically one point. And meanwhile, we really extended our our Moyo position, or our potential territory position. All right, so anyway, robots say approach this. That's the more robot thing to do. Uh, or, sorry, after after defending this top area. We have too much invested here. All right, but in the game... Is this the game? Where's my little cursor? Yes, this is the game. Uh, you know, our nine Don human player plays a human move, which is defend the weak stones. And white immediately attacks. And Shin, this is this is a good move. Like this is super probe kind of move. Like how much do you want to commit to saving these four stones? And there's a couple options here. Well, uh, probably the best way to deal with this is actually by counterattacking from the outside. If you're really if you really like these stones, you can play a move like this uh, to basically you know give white's shape a problem. And so you can decide to either give them up or or sacrifice. Uh, sorry, you can sacrifice them or connect them out depending on you know, how bad of white sh uh, shape uh, white wants to make. Um, I think the robot, I think the robot's here move here is here. Let's see, whoops. Uh, if I turn on the robot here, yeah. The robot likes attacking this way. And just, <laughs> you know, white, white just tanukis, white just goes and deals with something else. So, uh, very strange robot, how inhuman. Um, but in the game, Cho Chikun plays this move, which is generally a nice move to both defend against this cut indirectly, as well as, uh, you know, take some points away in the corner later. Uh, the real goal of this move is, yes, defend this indirectly by threatening to connect out this way. Now, there's a problem with this in that if white does get to cut here, then these two stones are stranded, and so you have to be okay with that. And in this case, black isn't really okay with that. Uh, black is still thinking, I want the outside. Uh, these two stones are important, right? You see all these black stones, you see these, see these two white floating stones. Man, it'd be really nice if we could continue against them. So when white cuts, uh, black just gives up. And this is, this is a choice, like this is, this is totally a valid sequence. Uh, just gives up the eight points and says, no, I want the outside. Uh, sequences where the robot says, instead of playing this move, play this move, are actually go very similar. Except when you give them up, you actually get better shape on the outside. Uh, this, this stone here, this is too endgame-y. Um, it's not worth enough. So if you, give, if you do decide to give up with a sequence like this, uh, this can be a better way to do so. Also note, when white plays a move like this, there's a clamp here that's pretty cool. So again, this is this is a tough this is a tough choice for white too. It's really hard to know when to try to take these stones versus when to make shape or get more liberties. Um, but anyway, Cho played this move and just gave up the stones to take the outside. Again, he's playing very Takamiya style in this game. Uh, and then here, this this move is a pretty natural move. It's it's a move the robots really don't like. Um, he's thinking, look, I still want to build the top. Um, I have this wall here. I need to anchor this wall from the other side. I need to balance it. And to do that, the best move is this. And that's true. Like, locally, it, f it fixes this sort of spacing a little bit. But the problem is that this wall is not at all solid enough to really warrant defending. It's not worth enough points, and it has too many defects. Your opponent has too easy of a time reducing you. And so the idea here is wrong. Uh, it's better, in this case, to go take another big move, maybe something like this, and really develop something large across the bottom. Let this be third-line territory, or even second-line territory for parts of it. Like, you can't make a million points here, go someplace that's bigger and you can. And if Cho did this, you know, maybe this would be a better result here. Uh, I think I got the robot running, yes, yeah. 
Yeah, so an indeed, take a bigger move, let your opponent cut here, do whatever, you know, forget about this. This isn't, it's, this group can't be developed as large as this entire quarter of the board. But it's a small difference. Um, another suggestion, uh, robots also like this move too, uh, making this kind of exchange, which almost fixes this enough to be defended. Usually humans don't like doing this because now, whoops, eh, let's do that. When white invades here, this group's actually kind of heavy. Like we've made a lot of bad exchanges if white can fight fairly here. Of course, the idea of this stone is that it helps in the fight just enough so that we still like the fight for black. So that's another choice. Uh, of course, black gives up the option to just invade the corner if black plays this type of variation. Uh, we don't do that anymore, but I think this would also be very reasonable, like also a choice. Anyway, we played this one, and again, this is this would be very slack according to robot style of thinking. I call these moves bubble moves, where you're leaving lots of air gaps in between the stones. Uh, you can see this whole line here is probably just going to be Dame. Like, there's no points here for anyone. It's like, a, it's like full three or four points that just no one has any potential separating the groups. And that's very, this is very old style, very Japanese style in the age of AI. We, we look for every point, right? We look, it's like, oh, there's a point there. I can take it. I'll find a way. So it's a little bit bubbly. Uh, Tako Shinji kicks here. Uh, Cho Chikun extends. This is very natural. Um, basically, white is just getting up a little bit extra support and asking. This is this is also technically an asking move, though almost every pro player would just extend here. So it's not really asking a real serious question. <laughs> um, but it does pave the way for white to come on top. And this is a really common uh, sequence or type of type of sequence and go, right? Where you make your opponent a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger, and then over concentrate them. Say, okay, th make them commit to something and then say, okay, that is exactly what you get. You get no more. I'm going to take everything else. And that's the idea here, right? By kicking here, we're saying, okay, black is committed to this. Now that black's committed to this, I'm much less interested in invading and fighting. I just want black to take what's rightfully his and I want to get what's rightfully mine. So then we slap this and Try to keep this as narrow a space on the board as possible. We play here. Cho Chikun starts a fight, because if he doesn't, this left-hand side is going to get so much larger for white than his top ever was. Uh, but white, uh, you know, plays a pretty standard fighting sequence, right? <clears throat> when faced with a cross cut, your intuition needs to be to extend. Black also extends, so we have essentially, you know, almost the, what's called the pinwheel shape or the windmill shape. Um, if this white stone here was placed here, it would make the perfect windmill where everyone has extended from the cross cut. It's a very beautiful fighting shape, a very peaceful fighting shape too, actually, uh, where um, everyone has liberties for a while, right? Everyone has a little bit of air to breathe, at least temporarily. A couple moves later, that might change. <laughs> uh, white makes a table shape here, and this is good shape. Again, attacking these two black stones, so we have a fight, these two black stones versus these two white stones. And there's a little bit of Aji here still left in this cut. Um, again, there's still a defect over here with this cut. And white also has these two stones. So, you know, right now we're, we're it's, it's, a, it's a fight. And what can I say, right? Black has all these outsides. And meanwhile, white has two small cutting groups to manage. White does have still more territory. I can't call anything in the bottom right territory. Uh, but that's fine. It's still worth, it's still worth something, right? Uh, Black takes this opportunity to fix this cut, to just simplify this fight. Now, it does give white a lot of initiative on the outside, uh, but this move's pretty necessary. You can imagine, let's say, white or uh, Black were to do something like this. Uh, this cut, ooh, real hard, real hard for Black to deal with, right? Um, if you make this exchange and just come out, uh, white doesn't have to even mobilize the stone immediately. White might take a tempo to move here. But uh, whenever white wants to, right, white, and if, and if, especially if we're white, you're going to give up, or at least if we're going to give these two stones up, or they're completely safe, white can even push out again and then come back and take this and, you know, go after something here. I Maybe mean, not that move, but, you know, move like that. <laughs> you can see the win percentage for white just, you know, rocket down there. Uh, so white is just taking control of this huge corner, and there's still there's still 
you know, very little territory and Aji here, right? There's key places to poke or cut in black shape, so. Cho says, no, I don't want to deal with any of that. I just want those points. Those are all mine. I've committed to those. I want that territory. And White says, great. I'm going to get the first move on the outside. And that is very large. Uh, Cho starts his, uh, you know, the thing Cho does. <laughs> and he cross cuts here. Uh, I think in the game, I think this is actually a better move, but we won't talk about that. Um, I think Cho is, is trying to find the defects a little bit too aggressively here. And it doesn't actually amount to much. Now, Cho Chikun is a really strong reader. Like, he, he can read this out. Um, but he, but he's also, he also wants to find, he wants to use every little bit of Aji, and sometimes that makes it difficult to know how to use it correctly. Uh, and there's, again, there's nothing inherently wrong with this move. I just think this move is, just being a little bit patient is actually better. Um, but Go players don't want to overcommit to a group. Like, playing this stone feels bad because you're making it heavy. So psychologically, it's, it's, I can totally feel him not wanting to play this, right? Psychologically, I'm saying, come eat me. I'm big and fat. It's Thanksgiving, right? No, it's... Um, Cho Cho Kun saying, hey, can we negotiate a little bit with this type of move? Now, even though the shape isn't going to be as good. He pushes out. White comes out. Now there is a push cut here. Notice black has the ladder. That's the whole reason why black feels like this is playable. And then after Black plays here, it is Tisuji time. Um, Cho Chikun has been drinking a cup of tea, and his tea cup is empty. So if you're playing Go, and you run out of tea during a very precarious moment, right? Look at this group. He's totally behind enemy lines. Uh, it's his opponent's move, but he wants to drink some tea. What do you do? Remember, you're on a timer. Granted, it's not your timer. It's your opponent's timer, but, but still. Well, let's watch what Choka Chikun does. And he's sitting here on the left. There's him with the glasses and the crazy hair. And that's it. And that's the tea stealing to Suji, the tea Suji. Did you guys notice what happens? <laughs> uh, there's, there's the game recorders. Uh, here we go. Let's switch camera right there. And, you know, she has her own cup of tea because, you know, everyone gets a cup of tea. And, you know, she's just there recording the game, officiating. And Jojo Kun just grabs her tea and drinks it. And the best part, if you didn't notice it, the best part about this meme is not what Jojo Kun does. It's actually the look on her face. Because she just dies inside. She just, and she's paralyzed, right? She just doesn't know what to do. She's just all like, Joe Chikun just stole my tea. And no one else saw it. <laughs> right? No one else cares or sees it. It's just her and Joe Chikun. And she has this very straight lace, like official trying to do the right thing. You know, Japanese politeness at a, at a tournament game persona. Oh man, we could watch this in slow motion. We gotta do that. There we go. Oh, oh, grab the tea. She she notices it. She like re she she's confused. She brings her hand back and waits. Her tea is now gone. She looks now at the Chojikun's face, back at the teacup lid, and then just sort of stares stares off. Notices that no one else sees this happening, and then just quietly dies inside. No. Because what else are you going to do? <laughs> it's pretty great. Pretty great. So that's the moment that this, this Tsuji happened, right? It was, it was uh, Tako Shinji's turn, and uh, Chocho Kun is trying to figure out what to do with this group, basically, and doesn't have enough tea to power him through it. Uh... In the game, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so from this point, I'm actually gonna sort of, glo the, the game gets really hard and actually confusing for a while. There's some subtleties with these fighting, there's still some floating groups around and some exchanges that happen and a co-fight that doesn't really go Cho Chikun's way. Um, but, you know, this is, this is the board position of the, the famous Tsuji. So this is, this is really the part I wanted to show you guys, I wanted to bring you up to, to speed to this part. Uh, what, what, well here, we'll just speed through a few more, a few more of these sequences. 
Chochukun gets this group out very stylishly with a shoulder hit, right, threatening to hem in the corner as the process. Uh, after making this one exchange, though, he finds the cut. We talked about this cut working because Black has the ladder, but White takes an Atari, settles the group, and basically there's this fight here. And it's not a real fight because White is just, it's White is just being pushed from behind. Black takes the shape point. Again, this is a very key point. This is the mouth shape. You play, right, poking at that defect. Keeps pushing, keeps pushing. White says, no, 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 I have enough liberties. Now it's time for you to die. <laughs> Black says, that's great. I'm going to take all the free stuff. And so Black continues just harassing this poor group. Uh, the throw-in is nice. Right, just short the liberties even more. Throw-in again, short the liberties again. Take an Atari. You can see White has just turned into this giant dumpling across the center of the table. And even though White's not going to die, uh, Black is really getting the opportunity to... to solidify not just some of these top points, but also build a wall down here. Uh, white finds the cut. And at this point, Black says, okay, I've gotten, I've gotten enough stuff. Let's, let's continue the game. <laughs> and so even though these stones, right, are going to die if, you know, White wants them, which is, that's always a question. You know, maybe there's something else better to do. Um, Black has gotten some co sort of compensation for them, right? Black has squeezed blood from the stone. Uh, Black comes down to fight. Um, here, the game is actually pretty close. So, so, it, so around the Tsuji, this is kind of the low point in the game, right? Like, this is according to the AI, we're right near the bottom of what the AI thinks is Cho, Cho Chikun's position. Like, the absolute worst moment in this game, right? In terms, in terms of his him falling behind. Uh, it's right here. It says he's about 13 points behind. That's how you, this is the Katago engine. So it kind of gives you a score estimate. He's 13 points behind. That's the moment he runs out of T. That's the pump. That's the part he needs it the most. He doesn't have it. But by stealing the poor game recorder's T. Oh man, he's able to make all these gains. Look at this, all the way to the point. All this free stuff to turning that 13 point you know, down behind to like a two-point game. And so he gets back in it throughout the sequence by giving all this up. So I think that's pretty remarkable, right? This is the power of tea. You guys see me drink tea a lot on my channel. Well, now you know why, right? Tea is very important to when you're playing Go. I want you all to remember that. Uh, white captures these, allows Black to get out. Black makes these exchanges first. These are all fine. And now Black, you know, even by, so by giving up this, Black was able to get something over here. <clears throat> Actually, Black gets one more free thing um, because White has to defend. Uh, gets a little bit of a wall here <clears throat> and hems this in on top. So pretty nice. So like, like you know, we had to give up two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 20 points. Like we really had to give up about 20 points, but we got some nice things out of it. So uh, we're able to even take Sente. It's the last thing we get. And now we have a nice looking bottom right hand corner. Uh, so from this point, it all becomes about this. Like, how does white deal with this? And black misses some opportunities here. Uh, there, and white, for that matter, also, there's this cut here that, that, or I should say black has to keep in mind, there's a kind of a nasty cut here that we have to keep in mind. White tries to make a group over here. However, you should note that these two stones still have Aji, and so black can use that Aji, right? Um, in this case, uh, this is not how the robot thinks the Aji should be best used. This, this is a little bit too far away from these two stones, right? It's too hard to attack these. Even though, um, you know, we, we basically separated them, it's not good enough. And so if we turn on the robot here, uh, you can see the robot really wants Black to play this move first, forcing this, and then we play this move which basically means white has to come back and kill three stones. And so when we take this, uh, we're, we're, we've now disconnected in such a way that we can uh, perfect the disconnection or guarantee the disconnection with, a, with a, a knight's move like this. And this is a very big difference, right? Now this group is so much more difficult time living. And it's very subtle, right? We increase the size. It, it was a very strange sequence, right? If you're not playing at a really high go level, like this was weird. 
Um, but I want, we'll, just, we'll just go back and compare it to what Chocha Kun got versus what the robot wants. And what the robot wants is just solidify this so we can play this knight's move and cut out the base here and attack on a real violent scale. In the game, by playing this way, notice we have a def we left a defect here. And uh, after this move, white doesn't need to respond again, right? Because it's, we, can, we can never connect. And so white even has a sente move to come and play out over here. White doesn't need to take this. So the robot finds this real, you know, beautiful sequence with this combination. And these are the moments that it's like, ah, oh, crap, humans suck, <laughs> right? That's bad. Humans suck at this game. Because this whole white dumpling only has two liberties, right? Look at how many stones. White need, what black has two liberties. White needs to play this. But since white needs to play this, we can also get to Atari. And assuming white connects, that's usually, should be the most proper move most of the time. Now we can play there. And sure, you could say, well, now white has Sente, sort of, but not really, right? Because we played an attacking move on this group. So beautiful. Like, this is, this is just so violent. Uh, this is the difference between, you know, really strong professionals and AI sometimes. Like, strong professionals can sometimes find these, these most severe cutting sequences. But it's not counterintuitive, right? When white cuts across here, like, like this is, let me go forward, this is the shape point, right? This is the one, this is the shape you normally use to take advantage of this. But it just so happens that because there's another cut here, uh, we can get something a little bit better. Right? And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if white takes this first, right? Like we still need, white still needs a move to come back here. And uh, uh, do, do, do. I think we still play this, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's exact same. Right, white still needs to take away liberty, no choice. This is no choice. We get the same violent attack on this. And if Cho Kun found this, I think he wins this game. He does end up losing this game by a point and a half. But this was a real turning point in the game where white just all of a sudden had so much less pressure put on him because black kind of ended this in Gote. Well, black got to separate it, but that's not good enough. Oops, let's go back to the game. And not only was it Gote, like you notice the difference in shape too, there's another defect here. And so that's killer, right? Once you start realizing this, this difference, that black was able to separate in Sente and or maybe not perfect sente because we had to kind of play one more move, but the move that we wanted to play was an attacking move against the group. Uh, once you can see that, ah, man, you can start evaluating some real serious complicated positions. Like if you can get your go to that level where you can, you can read out these two different shape sequences, and it's so hard, right? This is, this is again, Cho Chikun didn't do this, right? One of the best Go players of all time. Um, but the robots do, <laughs> and that's the scary part, right? The robots figured out, oh, if I play, if I sacrifice it a very non-human way, right, not cutting across the cutting stone, I don't leave this, this cut, and I can, I can attack when I cut off. Scary. Uh, it makes me kind of depressed, actually. It's like, definitely the robots are winning, taking over. Uh, anyway, uh, well, this sort of... <laughs> tab through the rest of the game. Uh, there is this Ko down here that Cho, that basically Cho Chikun has to... Again, he doesn't have a stone over here, right? So, like, notice the difference. If Cho, if Cho had a stone over here, um, he wouldn't have to fight a Ko for the life of this white group. And when white wins the Ko, basically black just doesn't get enough compensation. Um, there's a few other mistakes here. White shouldn't take that. White should just connect. Um, black got an opportunity, a really big opportunity here. And basically, the game is super close. Like, um, actually, after, you know, let's... Like, all this, basically, Black's trying to figure out how is the stick going to connect versus what's what white here is going to live or die. And, um, like, white's going to die eventually. Um, but white can play this this move to make it more difficult. And so... After black gets this cut move, um, this is kind of settled actually. Uh, very difficult for white to do anything else in here. But again, these cuts, white will come after these cuts. All oh, this is dead. White owns the entire left. So it ends up being, like I said, a very close game. Um, the final score is one and a half. 
But um, again, the robot kind of freaks out here at the end. It still thinks black is winning. And at the very last move after black fills us in, it's like, oh, yep, white wins. And so I don't know what happened here. <laughs> like, I, I don't... Do you guys see this? Like, it's like, black's winning by two points. And then black fills the co. Uh, white wins by a point and a half. So again, I don't... And some of these other moments are kind of similar. Like, these really weird freak-out moments. So if you have this game record, it is a 2015 game between... Chochakun and Takao Shinji. You can find it on goforgo.net. If you don't have an account, you go make one there. Uh, they've got a huge game database. You can download things. There's other sites as well that host you know, all these game records, uh, especially if you can read Korean, Chinese, or Japanese. Uh, but it was a tough, tough loss for Chochakun, but man, it gave us the T Suji. And so for that, I'm pretty thankful. I'm pretty happy. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>